I'd like to welcome pan player extraordinaire, cultural ambassador, and four-time champion, arranger, and director in the large band category of Trinidad and Tobago's Panorama Competition, Mr. Duvon Stewart. Blessings, man. Good just to be here, man. How you doing, Duvon? I'm, I'm, I'm amazing. I'm amazing. I'm really, really good. I'm a bit good. tired, but from the past couple of days and weeks of our hard work for the carnival season that just concluded here in Trinidad and Tobago, but I'm, I'm good. I'm alive. Good, good. good. Well, um, congratulations, first of all, on another large band championship. Yes, man. Thanks very much. How does that feel right now? Um, it's, it feels good, you know. It feels really good. And um, since I've um, converted to arranging for bands in the, in, in the um, conventional category of Panorama, you know, every, every arranger's dream is to, to win, is to win whatever right. they set out to, to do. But... Um, being in the, the, the creme de la creme category with the elites and grandmasters and virtuosos that I have been looking up to in my early days in, 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 in the instrument, uh, names such as um, Dr. Len Booty Sharp and um, Professor Leon Smooth Edwards and Robert Greenidge and you name them. You know, I, I'm very, very thankful, grateful. And, and, and I'm proud of myself and my, my success story to be in the same position or realm with these guys, you know, so I could deliver and showcase my greatness and my gift that God has blessed me with to do music amongst these, these great men, men and mentors of me. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, um, of course, the big question is... Uh, how do you feel about the tie? This is uh, historical, right? To have a tie in the finals of the large band competition, mm -hmm. a first place tie. Um, how did you feel about that? A win is a win. A win is a win for me. You know, but uh, one thing that we, we understood before coming into the game is that the judge's decision is final. And whatever the, the deliberations that come up with the, the winner, Maybe a, a one point win, a half point win, a one point loss, a half point loss, or a tie. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for, for what it is, you know, because um, being in the creative space of doing music and doing paranormal music to be in a competition, and um, again, being around these guys, you know, it's really good. I never thought that I would, I would have been in it, but. I heard about it from in the past before. I was never around them times, you know, about 1985 and 1971. I heard about it with um, Starleaf and Harmonites, and I heard about it with Amoko Renegades and Desperados. I never thought that the day will have happened again, that a, a tie will have happened in Panama. But anything is possible. Right. But it so happened that it happened with me, Devon Stewart, and I'm really, really happy and glad that, that, that it happened. But, um, yeah. That's great. That's great. So, um, you know, every panorama, after every panorama, there's always discussion about the judges. Um, of course, everybody wants their team to win. Mm -hmm. um, tell me something about the criteria that's used to judge the bands. What, what are the different criteria? What, 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 what are the... Um, I believe that the, the, each band is judged with a score sheet presented from Pancho Bago, which is right. going, to, going to be given to the judges. And before the competition commences, each band have a copy of the score sheet to see the guidelines on which the judges are going to be judging you, the arranger, right. on, um, for example, general performance, 40 points, arrangement, 40 points, tone, 10 points, rhythm, 10 points. And they have a they, they, um, subtitle breakdown in each of the four categories that they are going to be judge, judging the bands on. And also, um, they have the guidelines and we see the guidelines and what they, they see for us to follow in what we present with our, our piece, our music, our arrangement. So they could have the opportunity to 
to, um, to make a adjudication of it, a judging of it. No. I see. Yeah. So that brings up two questions for me. Um, number one, how with 40 points for each category, how does that add up to like 278 points at the end of a, a judging session? Um, well, they have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. They have six judges. And six judges they have. And um, after the competition can come is, is finished, when the competition is done, Pantry and Bigo then select out of a box with the six names that judge the competition to find out who is the ultimate. The ultimate score does not count within the scores that are going to be tabulated to present as the final score. I see. When they get when they de decide who the ultimate is, they now come up to see who is judge one, judge two, judge three, judge four, judge five. When that has been established, then the highest score and the lowest score from the judges for that said ban is going to be taken away. Wow. So the three scores in the middle is what they're going to add to get a ban out of a total of 300 points. Wow. I get it. I get it. So when you get that sheet before the panorama, how does that influence your arrangements? Do you, you arrange to those particular points? Of, of course, you want to maximize your, your points in every category. Yeah, well, well, they have a breakdown of what they ask for in the score sheet, which gives the arranger the guideline on how he or she can arrange his or her music. For example, um, arrangement, which is 40 points. It's broken down into four departments, for example. One, introduction. The introduction is the ability of the arranger to compose an appropriate prelude of the clip, so chosen as the prepared piece. The length, of, the, the length should be left up to the arranger's discretion. Two um, is like harmonization and reharmonization, which is the ability of the arranger to, to reharmonize the chosen piece in its original form then reharmonize it with different chord progression applied to the team, which could be applied to the remainder of the arrangement. Three, melodic development, which is like the ability for the arranger to embellish and utilize fragments of the melody in the arrangement. Four, motif development, is the, the ability of the arranger to, to take a melodic and rhythmic motif of the calypso and effectively utilize it during the arrangement. So with that four things I just ex explained there, the, the introduction, the reharmonization and, and harmonization, melodic development and motif development, that comes up to 40 points. However, the judges see to split right. out of the four departments, they have 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10. Then they have general performance. Right. They break it down into three parts, which is one, the, the interpretation. The first one is interpretation, which is the, the ability of the arranger to, to initially state the composition, the composer's intentions and the skill of the steel orchestra to, to execute the arrangement and all the articulations therein with precision. Right. Two is like dynamics, the, the effective execution of um, gradually 
graduations in loud passages, soft passages, and other musical expressions into the arrangement. You, know, you, you might have a soft passage, how great you execute it, um, a loud passage, and we call it like crescendos, decrescendos, and, um, and, and these kind of things, you know, you, you, um, you're rolling, you, you, you're staccatos, and you, how, how you articulate your you, um, you musical tensions between the, 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 the arrangement while it's been, um, been, uh, been done. And the balance, the balance is for the ability for the band now to, um, to distribute their instruments on stage so that all aspects of the orchestration of the arrangement will be audible throughout the performance. Got it. Then you have tone, which is the, the tuning and blending of pans. It's the overall tone and balance of the pans, how the, how the band song on stage with the music presented. And the, the rhythm is the, the ability of the arranger to, um, to effectively utilize the instruments and the engine room. Right. It's like the drum set, the congas, the iron, the scratchers, um, and make it applicable with percussive rhythmic patterns throughout the, the um the um the performance itself. So yeah. so they, they take these things into consideration and we see it, we go through it and we we build build our creation from there. Wow, really great insights, man. I never knew that those <laughs> Such, um, you know, it's fine details that you have to pay attention to. In yeah, your... a lot of fine details, you know, because they make sure they dot their I's on cross the T's in order for, for us, the, the, the arrangers, to, to bring forth our creation to the rules that they have with the score sheet that they um, right. present to us. Right. So, we know that a Duvon Stewart arrangement is about storytelling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I want to know is, what was the story you were trying to tell this year? What what emotions were you appealing to from your players, from the judges, and the public at large? Well, when the band decided the song DNA, composed by Mikel Tejia, um, there was a video, a video that was done with this, this song, this composition, I was made public through Mikhail Teja. But you know, back in the US or any country that has a song, you know, they, they might do a, a music video to follow up yeah. the song itself, you know? And that is one of the advantages that we have now in the Steel Pan fraternity where Calypsonians or Suka artists do music and they have a video to, to, to highlight their, their, their song, you know, back in the day when Kitchener and the Fosto and um, all, these, all these great bands from in the past never had that opportunity. The, the, the imagination concept that these arrangers had in the past you know, was just doing music from their feeling and their liking and how they want to present their music. Um, when I came into the game of um, arranging and I analyzed what was taking place within the whole landscape of steel pan arrangements. This is just my opinion. I, I found it to be kind of monotonous to the point that every year you're coming to hear a band perform and the, the, the trademark or the trade line or the, the, um, the track line that they use is, is like something that you could predict what is going to happen next or how it's going to be done and stuff like that. No disrespect to the guys in the, in, in the um in, in in the past that that did what they did because in order for me and the now generation arrangers to be in this position right now we had was to listen to somebody and get ideas and get a template to see how it has been done. Um, for example, it's like if somebody wants to play jazz and they go into a bookstore and they buy how to play jazz by Oscar Peterson. You go through the book, 10 chapters, you read it thoroughly, all the guidelines, information is being given in the book. When you're through with that book and you go on a piano, you go on a pan, who would you sound like? It would sound like Oscar Peterson. Right. But it now gives you the individual who just read that book 
to ask the question, do I want to song like Oscar Peterson or do I want to song like Duvon Stewart? To the point where I will listen what was done, I will comprehend, I will put into motion what I learned there, but I'm going to put my own style and flavor towards the information that was given to me. Mm -hmm. So by saying all of this, the, in, the, the song DNA was a song that gave me all the information via the video to make this arrangement how I saw it fit in my creative space. The video was all about a woman lying on, uh, lying on a bed in a hospital with no identity. On that video, there were three vials or three syringes where the syringes were placed into her, which was red, white, and black. They were all inserted into her. Bear in mind, the name of the song is DNA. If you listen to the lyrical contents of the song, I feel like a running tongue again, jump on prance and bakery with my friends and family, no place like home. So when the syringes went into her, she automatically became a Trinbegonian. She now has an identity. So when I saw that on the video, I now get the idea that the first thing that came to me was make this song patriotic. Patriotic to the point where an individual was now placed with three liquids in her body. She's now a Trimbegonian, so she now has an identity, but she needs to know what her identity is like. So feel like running tongue again, she's going to meet a group of people that are Trimbegonians. So she's going to be asking around, who am I? They say you are Trini, you're a Trimbegonian. What color is your flag? Your flag? She doesn't know because she now get the red, white, and black into her. So they're going to tell her that she's a Trimbegonian. The color of your flag is red, white, and black. Your national anthem, your, your, your national songs, your national flower, your national birds, and stuff and stuff like that. But yet still, when I was doing the, the, the actual arranging of the song via the EPAN, my mind was thinking about making it become patriotic and educational at the same time to people in Trinidad and Tobago and by the world by 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 extension the world making them to know what our anthem is what our national songs are and these songs were used as quotes within the arrangement for people to identify what was happening there was a part of the song where the band stopped completely and you heard like a timpani and a snare rolling, like a press rolls rolling. That is how our anthem starts in Trinidad and Tobago. Right? And you hear ba 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 da ba 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 da ba da 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 This I falls from the love of labor. But I did not do the anthem. I used the opening bars of the anthem, which is the percussion. But what I did after, I, in, I made another quote of one of our most powerful national songs. It was like, God bless a nation of many very races. And by using that quote, God bless our nation with, very, with, with many varied races, we come from a country that is so, so multi-ethnical with different races. We have the Indians here, we have the Chinese here, and we have the, the Africans here, we have, you name it, we have everybody here. And I try to incorporate the different rhythms that was resembling a race within the cosmopolitan ethnic group that we live here in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. And as I go along doing the arrangement, I was explaining to the players and explaining to the public, likewise, to the people who came into the Panayat. One thing about Duvon Stewart, I do like to 
make people feel that when they come into the pan, you have to listen, my arrangements and creations, and listen to the band perform and practice. It's not just a night leaving your home and coming to the pania just to play music that comes from my head. I'm, I, I like to do things to the point where I want to make you see visually what's inside my head or what I'm trying to make you understand. And if you don't have all the five senses that we'll be best with, I want to make the blind see and make the deaf hear and make these powerful things come together within music. And again, I, I, I try as much as possible to explain thoroughly of what the arrangement was. First and foremost, it's the DNA. Two, it's patriotic. Three, it's educational. Four, maintaining the spirit of carnival, maintaining the spirit of the panorama where the creation comes in for the band to enjoy. That's beautiful. I gotta tell you something. Um, you have brought something to the panorama in terms of directing the band um, and pointing out the different movements that are going on musically with the different parts of the orchestra. This is, is something that we didn't see before. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of effect do you think this has on the, not only the judges, but also on the public and, and how that, that elevates the energy People can understand, well, this is what's happening in the music. You know, this is this, this section and, and this is what it means. You know, like when you beat your heart, you know, this is the heartbeat. All these things, uh, I'm sure, contribute to the performance. How, and I, of course, we see other directors now are trying to do the same thing, which I think you pioneered. And um, to me, that just, it, it really adds to the performance. You know, it really clarifies what the music is about. And um, how, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I, I more use it as um, an assistant tool for the judges and the public and the listeners to see what is happening, where and when. What is doing the work to highlight what is coming out at the point in time? Because funny enough, you know, I, I will speak here, you know, People in Trinidad and Tobago or, 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 or by extension, the world doesn't really understand the rules and functions of different pans within the steel pan family yeah. and how they operate and how the band is set up on stage. You know, you could visually see which pans is doing what. So when I put my hands out and I extend it far wide, it's like the bases and the middles and it's doing that. It's creating something there. And... Um, Right, right throughout the band, and our point center of the band is at the rhythm section, and right in front of me, I talk about the, the um, uh, and I highlight these parts that that need to be highlighted for the judges and the audience to see where uh, what, what what direction I'm going with the music and who is doing what in highlighting what and to make things more audible for people to understand what is taking place. It has been working for me, and I see a lot of people using it. And I, um, I'm very happy that they, they could do, do, do likewise. You know, um, it just makes me feel much more of a leader in the game, a uh, trendsetter in the game. And it, it never used to be happening back in the past because um, um, I think Clive Bradley was the first guy who did it um, at High Mass in 1998. And he did it so well to the point where his music was so well orchestrational, orchestrate, orchestrally um, put together that he was highlighting so many things that a judge may not see, or a judge may not hear, or a judge may not identify. You know, it's more like a guide for them to see what is taking place. You know, it's, it has its advantages and its disadvantages, but more on the advantages side, because really and truly, steel pan music doesn't really need a conductor or director in front. But right. then again, to it, it, it adds to highlighting what is happening there at the point in time when a band is expressing a piece of music for eight minutes at about 126 BPM per yeah. second, constantly, by 10 bands for the night. So we had a, we, we're trying to do something a little different, you know. Again, we're living in a new era now where Panorama is, is changing. And um, anything that goes for the positive to make things happen good for, for Duvon Stood and for the bands that he's working with, I try to, to bring it across with, with what I try to do to make the band be more um, 
more seen and more, more, more heard and more expressive in what they're doing with the music, you know. But it has benefit, benefited well for me, and I, I see others, again, I see others doing it, and I, w- I wish them all the best with it, but I'm a guy that always tend to go nowhere where man has gone before, always trying to do the unexpected and try to bring the unexpected to the table, you know, so... Yes. Example like the, the storytelling in music, you know, you never really had the storytelling and, and arranging music. Yeah. You never really had the theatre in um, Panama music. You never really had the the, um, the charismatic individual in front of the band showcasing and sending that adrenaline of energy towards the players that is in front to pump that music and to make the sound, the, the heartbeat that the band flow yeah. that filters throughout the band. So I, I I go about doing it my my way. Nice, nice. So, um, another thing about the arrangement, mm-hmm. what adjustments did you have to make at the different stages of the competition, from preliminaries to semis to the final performance? What adjustments did you have to make? And the reason why I'm asking this, um, some people thought that Renegades actually performed better in the semis than in the finals. Okay, and I could explain the reason for that. Um... What happens with a Panama arrangement, and I got to understand this, what I'm telling you here, uh, a couple years back, could be about eight, ten years ago, is that when we the arrangers do a piece of music for Panorama, the song is owned by the arranger and the band after the preliminary wrong. When the preliminary wrong is being concluded, the song does not belong to the arranger and the band anymore. Because there are score sheets, there are judges, there are comments. And that is where the judges now come and say, you should have do this, you should do that. I would like to hear this. I would like this to happen. I would like this to be done. So in other words, my creative space that I exercise within the arrangement goes now into the hands of the judges. It it doesn't it it, it's not Duvon Stewart anymore. It's now the judges telling Duvon Stewart what to do. Which I find is totally wrong. But guidelines on the score sheet, if they see fit to tell you that you should have put the crescendo here and it will give you more marks, you will do it. The song doesn't become my again, it comes their own. So they're telling you what to do with your, your music. I mean, that makes sense? Yeah. You understand? But with that being said and done, when I, when I did DNA, against uh, when I did music in my head or vibes or some of the songs that I did in the past, I found myself to be in a position where when the results has been made public after the preliminary wrong, my band and my music, amongst the other bands and bands' music, are like in the middle of the pack, like fifth, sixth, seventh. But at that stage, I knew what I want to do musically for the final. But if you so far back but giving them what they want, what, what you give them at a preliminary wrong, which makes it satisfactory for you to be in fifth or sixth or seventh place. But yet they're telling you what to do with the same arrangement. But in your mind, you know what you want to do for the final. In other words, you will confuse them. So I've built a mindset to do an arrangement, polished, 98% complete from preliminary round. So from 2018 till 2024, I have never been lower than second place. I was always in striking distance to the finishing line. Why? Because I've put out my all. I'm not saving anything. I'm not leaving anything to chance because, again, we are dealing with human beings that are judges. 
and they could articulate so much, they could retain so much, and they could give off so much energy to what, what you're doing. And with this song, DNA, we came second in the preliminaries. It was done all in the panyard. All bands were judged in the panyard. I see the preliminary wrong as an audition, which have its advantages and its disadvantages. One, acoustics. Every band in Trinidad and Tobago have acoustics advantages and disadvantages in their panyard. Some band songs real good, big, strong, powerful. Some band songs lie because the wind might be steep in music and go over the place, you know. And that is something that you can't really get away from. And next thing too, all the bands that perform in the panyard prepare the panyard in such a way, the seat position and placement where they put the judges to judge the band at the preliminary stage is totally different. Everybody's not at the same distance. So when I saw Rennie Gaze was in second place, we tied with All Stars, and Exodus was ahead by four points, I was never, ever in a panic mood because none of us was on a level playing field. When we all came to the Savannah, four days after the preliminary results came out, it's like you're bringing everybody now to do a preliminary, a preliminary, preliminary round, judging of the competition at the semi-final leg. The audition is done. They have selected who they want to hear in the Savannah. You bring everybody on a level playing field. The energy that we possessed and gave off in a preliminary round, we did it the same way at the semi-final round, but everybody again was on a playing field. And when the results came back out, we came first. One point in Hyder All-Stars, the band that came first came third. But we knew that the bands in Trinidad and Tobago no band in Trinidad and Tobago has good acoustics like Republic Bank Exodus in the Pania. The band is excellent, powerful in that whole in St. Augustine where the band is practicing and doing the music. They sound very powerful, very clean, very heavy. Um, they, normally the band doesn't really have canopies over the band in the Savannah, but in the Pania, they have this big humongous shelter over them that makes the song so rich and clean and heavy. So when 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 I, I went up there in 2023 and I heard them and I always say, wow, there's something big and heavy. And when I heard them in the Savannah, it's totally, totally two different things. So I know that I have a, a, a foot ahead of, of Exodus where the acoustics and the, you know, the song is concerned. Arrangement wise, I never ever make mention of if my arrangement better than Exodus arrangement or if my arrangement better than All Stars arrangement because I have so much respect for these brothers and these arrangers in the creative space that they are doing it all from their heart knowing that they are doing what God has blessed them with. It all, all boils down for me to performance. It all boils down for me to, to how the band synergize that energy on stage and it's the, the mental preparation of how you put the things into place for... for um, for, for, for your band to perform in the Savannah. In terms of changes, where I did for, for, um, for Panorama this year, not forget it, this year was really the shortest ever Panorama season. Normally I take something like about 21 days to do a Panorama arrangement. I took like about nine days to do DNA for Renegades. The season was so short. Panorama was, com well, it was completed before Valentine's Day, first time completed before Valentine's Day. So you could imagine the kind of work that was going on behind the scenes with Renegades and Devon trying to make this thing happen. Back to the changes. After going back to the score sheets, with the music and the arrangement, they had no problem. They liked it. They loved it. They loved the, the story. They could understand what I was trying to talk about in music with the story. But everything was just on one volume. I didn't add no dynamics. I didn't make the song, put color to the song. I didn't put no salt, no black pepper, no spices, no this kind of thing to make it acceptable as a refined product. And this is where the 14 days that we had between 
semi-finals and finals, I took time to take a, 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 a needle, take the thread and pierce it through the eye of the needle and go through the music in detail. Right phrases, right trans transition modes from one section to the next, how we roll these notes, how we present ourselves behind the instrument playing this music, adding the crescendos, the loud passages, the soft passages, how we, how we, how we, how we articulate the dynamics in terms of how we are going to perform the dynamic in terms of a band, I might say, to create a dynamic of a crescendo, I want you to not gradually get louder, but I want you to hit the note, hit it, and the resonance of the note will ring on and you just gradually creep it up in that as we go through all these little technical things that wow. makes the, um, the, the band very much more refined. And seeing that we are presenting this for the final, the grand, the grand finale, the ending of your song, has to be spectacular, mind-blowing. It has to be people screaming, people off their feet, clapping, we want more. And that was the only thing that I did with the arrangement. I changed it to bring about the climax of what concludes a very good season from Duvon Stewart to Renegades to the public who is listening saying thank you by exploding my arrangement with a, a very dramatic, high energy, high climatic ending. And, 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 and we did we did what we had was to do. Um, being a defending champion in the, in the category, when I heard um, we came first in the semifinals and All Stars came second by a point behind, and Exodus was a uh, um, well back. You know, I always went with the mentality and the mindset, knowing that um, each band starts at zero at the final night, but the music was out there. The music has been on the ground. You know, everybody buzzed into the panier and hear what is happening. Boy, Renegades so nice, but all sides got take it this year, but not Renegades got clip them and also and some stuff like that. So my biggest anticipation at that point in time was the draw. Yeah. But way back in the days, even before I was even like good form and massive Catholic All Stars playing Panorama Final Night, they have been given the slogan a final night band. They are most dangerous on a final night. Smooth is very dangerous. At a final night, you never know what he coming with up his sleeve, you know. And I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared. So I just had to do what I had was to do. But I wanted to draw a number close to them, or after them, knowing that they are so dangerous on a final night when they have a good, good, good song going for them. And when the draw took place on the Wednesday. To the Panama Finals, to the week of the Panama Finals on Saturday, we picked number four, and All Stars picked number ten. The eleven bands. So what happened now? I didn't do the ending as yet. I was waiting to see what number All Stars was because I saw them as my biggest threat. I saw all the rest of the bands with much respect, but All Stars was the biggest threat. So when I heard All Stars was playing number ten, then I started to activate that ending. To hold Renegade's dominance, perfection in performance, which I know the band will have delivered on the Saturday night, with an ending that can hold out until band number 10. I'm not saying that the bands before me and the band after me weren't good bands, but I know that I had a great chance of winning Panorama. So by me... Putting down that final nail in the board, in the cupboard, with that hammer, the ending has to be spectacular because I know band number five, band number six, band number seven, band number eight, band number nine has to play. That's a big lull. Then you have Massey Trinidad ourselves coming up with this banger, which by the band knows we, we all know them to be a final night band. So I was to put something in place, you know, to activate and to, to leave that, that, that ending. That ending adrenaline in the judges of the mind, you know? And, yeah. and when every band finished plays, you know, nah, boy, Renegade still have it. Well, yeah, uh, that's, 
Yeah, and I, I was I, I I wasn't in the savannah. I went I went back home. I went band number four. You finished finished playing band number four. I went back home, and I had a couple of friends in the savannah just there listening to Panama. Um, Papi, the inside still. Band number eight. Wow, Papi, that's proud. Those song good boy. I said, I expected them to sound good on a Friday night. I said, okay, that's one to look out for. Um, band number ten. Papi, watch yourself, boy. All stars, boy. I said, no, I expected that. And I saw the performance and um, the judges, this, this decision came up that the two bands tied for first. You know, I, was, I was pleased with it. I was happy with it. You know, But the preparations towards preliminary, the audition into the semifinal, let's present the same thing that was done from preliminary and semifinal to final. Just dot the I's, cross the T's, add the crescendos, add the excitement, add the performance, add everything. Put the band in a, 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 a mental state of, of going to fight battle with your sub bands in the competition. Do an ending, explore the place, mash up the place, and that's it. Yeah, and your explanation it just confirms exactly what I was seeing. Mm. It was musicality versus execution. Because that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. All stars brought all stars brought the, the, the fire and the party in the arrangement, you know. We, always do, boy, yeah. They always do, but um I'm not saying that he's uh, he, he wasn't that musical, but I believe that I had some some nice musical things happening with my arrangement that, that gave me the the um the, the, the edge and to compare the two elements, the excitement and the arrangement, it was difficult to separate the two bands, you know. The two bands were excellent. All bands were ex excellent in the night. A band that I was very, really impressed with at the night, I was Starlet. Starlet was very, very good. Wow. The band that did Pan in the Minor, they were very good. Yeah, um, which is actually my next question is uh, what do you think about the general competition, uh, the level of competition this year? The, the, the competition, the, the, the standard of the, the competition, musically wise, it, it's growing. It's growing, and everybody uh, taking risk and putting in the, the next uh, 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 on, a, on a guillotine. In yeah. doing what they want to do, you know, and nobody's scared and doing what they want to do with their music and their creations, you know. The bands are, are very well, um, they're together, they, are, they have a level of energy that they, they possess, and um, nobody's greater than anybody in that, that respect. But, um, what I have at BPTT Renegades, I have a well oiled machine, and it starts from the top the organization, transparency, yeah. um, the love, the, 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 the um, the, togetherness that we have at BPTT Renegades is second to none. And having an arranger who is a, a people person who thinks just like any other human being, not just not knowing that he's just the arranger. He's, his role is to do the music, but he sees himself as the arranger for the band, as a human being coming to do a, a piece of music for the band. So. My role and my function with the band is just as equal as a player coming to play the music in the band. I'm on the ground with everybody. So when they see that level of um, respect is being given, I treat nobody different from anybody. I, I, I talk to everybody. I give everybody a love and that, that, that full support in doing what I want to do. And that's how they give out the best in what they do. You know? And all the bands I have worked with have, 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 have adopted that trademark. You know? and, and the result speaks for itself. You know? um, Winning over 35 Panama competitions globally um, um, is a record that I have built on my built, built for myself going forward. I believe nobody's close to that right now, but I'm I'm living on. I'm doing things, man. I'm, I'm doing cool. things. So cool. Well, let me round up with a few questions there. Um, what does the rest of your year look like? Uh, um, uh, production, um, you know, creative projects and other panoramas around the world. Um. I, I have one more panorama competition to, to arrange for, which is in the UK, which is the, the Ebony Steel Band. Um, I've been working with that band since 2015. Uh, I won panorama with them in 2015, 2016, 2017. I didn't win 2018. I didn't win 2019. I didn't go 2020 because of the COVID. Yeah. 2021, there were no panorama. 2022, there was no panorama. Yeah, 2022, there was a panorama there. And I came first in 2022. Yeah. 2023, we came first again. So next, this year is a hat trick year for yeah. Ebony, Steel Band, and Duvon Stewart going to arrange for them. 
Um, I don't know what song I'm going to do now, but um, rest assured with the mind, get back in and settle place, and I just come up with a, a, a song to arrange for the band. Or no. They normally pick the song, and they normally work with what um, musical ideas that I have to make it possible. And and big respect um, and shout out to all the rest of the bands in the UK that, that, that are going to take part in the event. I have some master classes and lectures to, to do at um, various universities and music conservatoires in France, um, in Nantes, in Paris, in uh, Bordeaux, in Toulouse, in Laval. Um, I have a little um, workshop to do in um, Dortmund this year, Germany. Um, I have um, some workshops to do in the US with um, the Ellie Manet Steel Pan Music Academy in Morganstown. Mm -hmm. I have um, another workshop to do in Virginia Beach where they have a Virginia Beach Steel Band extravaganza right. there. I um, have some um, some concert performances that I have to, to, um, to perform in different countries. And you know, for one, I have one to do in Antigua next month. And after St. Thomas here in the Caribbean, um, in, in the UK, I have some um, some performances to do there. Um, receiving emails and, and um, trying some individuals trying to acquire my service to, to, to do to do other things, you know, motivational speeches and and um, clinic clinic events, you know, clinic clinic products stuff stuff like that, you know. So um, yeah, so my yes, my yes, pretty pretty busy. I'm thankful for it, you know. But it all stems from. Doing good work, you know, as one some, something that I've learned back in the past, you know, everything that you do is like the advertisement for the next one. Exactly. So once you once you do good work and it's been out there resonating in the minds and hearts of people within the steel band community, they get to know who's the individual and it's all accessible for them to meet that individual once a successful year has started for you, you get that blight, you get that opening space, you know, you get that time to to, to, to be recognized through the different school systems. And I I, I like it. I like I like working steel pan music more on the educational side because um, I believe that there's a missing generation that is missing a lot of the educational values that music with the instrument steel pan yeah you know and um, me coming out in mid, mid to the Midwest and meeting guys like um, Jim Munson Ryder and um, yeah. Dr. Eugene Novotny and um, Tom Miller um, and, and um, all these guys you know, I have a, a fair share of humility and see what they do with the instrument and the programs that they have running with the instrument and the way how they go about doing things with the instrument outside of panorama because i keep telling people all the time Definitely. c pan music is not just about panorama you know it's, it's a whole whole big thing a whole big thing that happens with the with the with the, with the music and then again to a find out find out that um a lot of the the the, the, the other countries outside of trinidad and tobago are now investing in the, the marketing part of the instrument um, the, and the production part of it, you know, who making nice pans, who making pan sticks, who making pan stands, who coming up with different inventions. And, and, and being around these high schools, you know, um, these music expos come around and somebody might want to say, well, yo, Duvon Stewart, we have a new PS sticks. We wanted to try it. We could put your name on it, endorse it first and stuff like that. All these opportunities happen outside. Um, a pan stand, a, a pan case, you know, um, yeah, I, I I I just enjoy traveling and see what the world has out there for me to be a part of um what what what, what I could get back to bring back the intro and to be on the show. Excellent. So yeah. let's round this up. Um, mm -hmm. Give me your top five pan players. My top five pan players. Yeah. Top five pan players. Number one. A little kill man. A little kill me when I make my top five. Right? <laughs> my top five pan players. Put you on the spot. Yeah. Of course, the greatest of all greats, Dr. Len Boogsy he, 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 he's, he's, he's my number one. He's my number one. Um, number two, there's a guy in, in the U.S. I shouldn't say number two, but my five favorite pan players. My favorite. They don't have to be in any. Area. No, 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 my five favorite pan players. Yes. I like to listen to. I like to listen to. Andy Norell. 
Okay. I like to listen to Victor Provost. Yeah. I like to listen to Tulef. I like to listen to Andre White. That's it. That's a kid out in um in um New York. Yeah. And recently, I've discovered a brother out in the West Coast who goes by the name of Mr. Phil Hawkins. Wow. A lot of people in Trinidad don't know this guy. Yeah. But I had the opportunity to meet him face to face. Yeah. And to listen to his music and to listen to his style of how he arranges and composes his music. Yes. He is multi talented. He is special. He is special. I don't know if 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 they, if they can get some work from him to, to see. And he's so quiet and laid back and yeah. humble and and um, I, I remember when I was one I was out in the West Coast sometime, you know. And I know he's a multi-talented musician, stuff like that. Yeah. And I was expecting him to play some steam drums. And I came into the club. I believe I was with you that night, you know. Yeah. And we saw him playing drums. And oh, this man was just like phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. But that, that, that's, that's, that's some of the guys that I like listening to. Yeah. Um, in any order. But the greatest of all greats is... is um. Bugsy. Dr. Len Bugsy Shah. I like listening to Robert Greenwich too. I like listening to um, Dr. Ray Holman, Victor Provers, um, Phil Hawkins, Andre White, two left. And there's another kid out in the, uh, in, in, on the East Coast. His name is um, um, Jonathan Scales. Yeah. Jonathan yeah. Scales. Has some, yo, man, we have, let me show you something. We have some nice cats. We have some nice cats that play the instrument that we never really take time to. Out in France, there's a guy called Matthew Ball. Yeah, yeah. Harris. Yeah. He is a beast. He's a beast. There's a guy in Guadeloupe, Martinique, by the name of Laurent Lalsangi. Yeah. He is a he is a killer player. You know? Um what about Foster? Um, um there's a guy out in the UK now um doing some great things. From Trinidad and Tobago resides in the UK now, Leon Foster. Oh, that's a man. He, 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 <laughs> has, some, he has some nice chops happening, you know. And and I like to listen to one steward sometimes when I'm with myself. <laughs> listen, man, listen. I was, I tried to hook you up with Phil because I was hoping um we waiting for that solo album, man. Yeah, well um what happened is that um I'm I'm presently working on a project with this guy from France by the name of Mario Connage. Yeah. The keyboardist the keyboardist from um the, the band Sake Show. Sake Show, yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm doing some heavy work with him, doing um uh, uh, an album in the making, some original content that we're looking to to bring out and put out. You know, so um, okay. In 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 a few days, you know, you'll see something. Something will come out. Something will come out. You know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Duan, thank you so much, man, for yeah, doing this. Much, and, uh, before we go, I just want to let people know about um the series, the man behind the music, which is produced by Mark Loquan, which is on uh. YouTube. On YouTube, um, three beautiful videos, man. Um, I just want people to know about it. And I am also going to put the links to those videos down there so people could check out the man behind the music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, hey, thank you so much, man. <laughs> no problem, man. You know what we do. You know what we do, man. You know it's a lot do. of fun. Yeah. That's right. Okay? Yes, man. Thank you, man. God bless. Yeah. Bless sir. Okay. Pan Plays Podcast has been brought to you courtesy of Kakesa Pan Emporium, where you find pan products you never knew you needed. Check it out at kakesa.com. Thank you, and until the next time, kutichew.